welcome to this interview uh, thank you so thank much, you so much for having me it's more like a podcast you just have to relax and it's pretty much about your own life so i'm just going to be asking questions over like yeah like, i'm just have to revisit it but i have a very special connection with you guys so it's the year 2009 i'm having the quite possibly the shittiest summer ever and i'm like my god is there anything on tv which can be fun i switch on tv and what happens is india's got talent is there and i know that's going to put a smile on your face i thought so and i am like okay man i can see instruments i can see all this i've just got into rock for the first time in my life i can see rock in india on stage the song is still not started y'all are just standing on stage and then the rock cover of urvashi happens Obviously my grandparents are like what the hell is this how can they do this to a song i am like what the hell is this why hasn't this been done to the song yet right so it's just two completely different reactions i immediately connected with it there are some people who were shocked and then obviously you all had a very good reaction from the judges also on stage that day so just for a moment just go into nostalgia mode and take me back to that day when you all performed pretty much on mainstream media and kind of changed the game for youngsters like me i mean it was a big day for someone like me to see something like this so there are two two words you want to start with it or should i should i go? okay i uh, so honestly we were not aware of how big the platform is we were a bunch of kids uh, we were like in college and we had no idea that we were about to uh, appeal to such a large number of people we actually used to do that song as a fun kind of a relief from our really serious original music at our gigs and um, going on india's got talent was not really one of our life goals as a band it just happened somebody got in touch with us and uh, we ended up going there and so when we were performing that song giving it our all for us it was uh, very similar to how we were in college competitions where we would go and we were like you know if we are going to be on stage we're going to be the best and we're going to you know we're going to win this competition that's what that's the kind of mindset we had and that's all we did uh, and um, luckily we had been performing on stage for a while so we weren't afraid of so many people in front of us and the like you know the celebrities who were there, there were and we and honestly didn't things. expect to uh, be appreciated we thought we were going to be made fun of we thought it's just going to be you know it's going to be one of those times and we you know we were very happy to just be there for one episode and luckily uh, people reacted to it positively and we have like you know it's been great since so it was our first time performing in front of so many cameras and uh, very honestly speaking on that particular day uh, like the day of the shoot uh, we were uh, it happened right here at science city in uh, science city auditorium calcutta so they showed a lot of interest towards us and they really liked this you know this whole attitude that you know these people were just here to have fun they were, we weren't taking the competition very seriously so there were people who had literally you know you hear these stories right that people have come in they have dedicated their lives to this and now this is their only opportunity to fame we didn't have that mindset we were like this is a competition we have to play it and that's pretty much it also um, the fun story is actually before that which we'll get to in a while but uh, on that day we actually got to shoot a lot and it was our first exposure to what it's like you know in a tv show so we didn't really get it lo- we almost shot for 9 hours so all the footage that you see clubbed in those 13 minutes or 10 minutes of that show of that episode was actually shot for 9 hours and they were like and everybody was just having a ball like you know one like a small little interview was turning into like a one hour talk session where they were like exactly. and you, these all these people like the whole um the whole crew that was there yeah the producers of the show actually really connected with us at a personal level which is why i think we got a lot of support from uh, the show itself and they were really um, they were really good to us and they kind of became our friends immediately and they used to push us uh, to you know to do the songs and they used to help us g- give suggestions and it became like we, we we would hang out with them more than anything else so the fun story happened before that so uh, india's got talent was just um, 
<laughs> it actually became the main thing but it was not supposed to be so what happened was in 2010 um GIR na no IROC no independence rock uh, IROC yeah so IROC was happening okay and it was happening after almost 5 or 6 years yeah hmm. that's the thing so um we had so we were a very heavily competing band we were touring all over the city and at that point of time that was also our main source of revenue so we basically would go to a college we would win that competition and get like 35000 25000 50000 rupees and that's how we would sustain so our um, it, it's actually ridiculous or crazy you can say that our entire musical career were, was based on uh, whether we won a competition or not because we didn't know when, when from where the next you know when the next gig is going to come in So, so we, I remember that uh, we were really excited about I Rock, Independence Rock, and we sent in our we, we sent in our entries and we got selected. So we we had to go to Bombay. The people uh, in the meantime, um, I got a call. I think I got a call from uh, somebody um, from India's Got Talent. We would do these really small shows in these. At that point of time, Calcutta had these. small hole in the wall pubs where people would be organizing these indie shows and we would be playing them so there was this place uh, it's a hotel um, called basement and there was a pub in it called basement it was literally in the basement of the hotel and we would go there and play and we i got a call and somebody said that hi i'm calling from india's got talent in a very serious tone and i immediately like and we did not know what india's got talent was yeah, to be very honest as in we knew we had seen ads of it and the and something about the tone of that man really pissed me off like you know the guy was like hey i'm calling from india's got talent and stuff and i was like you know like yeah. i don't i don't want to talk to this guy so and yeah. so and i was saying really nice things but that first tone only and i was like no 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 we don't want to go and the guy asked me why so i said you know what your show is not really for a rock band you know you guys have like people doing a lot of other stuff uh, uh, we don't want to be gelled in the same category as them so and that happened and it was over and uh, we sent in our entries to i rock and then um, i we got selected so we got very excited and at that point of time we got selected for another competition uh, we actually won we actually won the eastern leg of uh, yamaha asian beat asian beat yeah so yamaha asian beats uh, we were the f- we were the eastern champions and we were also due to go to bombay same time so what happened was after that we get another call and we again reject india's got talent and these guys are getting really desperate they have seen us in a performing a show and they have seen us performing urvashi and so this is at this point of time like the top tier management of the company organizing is calling us and we are constantly telling no and we are we are we are making it seem like we don't care about this we actually don't and they are getting more and more interested so then what happened was uh, we we got a call from asian beats and from iroc and they said that they are not going to be paying for our travel and accommodation so we can go there play but you know in Mom, in mumbai we have to figure out what to do by ourselves Always. and so we got into this dilemma and we were like we don't know what to do um and uh, very honestly speaking i have um, i don't know we, how we are going to get there so uh, what happened was we called up india's got talent we had a number of this guy i still remember and we made uh, adil call up and all of a sudden we started talking to them in this really nice way and we were like hey you know what you were talking about this competition that's going to happen and you know for you know just the great people that they were they were still talking with to us with that same amount of enthusiasm so they were like yeah we've been calling you you know four five times our team has gotten that sure, yeah. and so we asked them just one question we said that you know if we get selected in the calcutta round and the team was so confident that we are going to get selected they were like ha ah, tum logo ka to ho hi jayega we actually didn't have to do the you know the lines and those initial auditions they didn't uh, they had pretty much decided they, that they want us to be a part of the show okay so okay. you go directly in front of the judges so they were like ha ha sab ho jayega you guys come down and i said okay um can uh, 
do you guys provide accommodation and travel because india's got talent was never the main thing and we were like oh we are going to go there stay for one episode do iro uh, do uh, asian beats and come back so they were like of course we are going to provide you travel accommodation food and we were like yes yes we are coming <laughs> so that's how india's got talent started and it was not until uh, say the second episode that we really realized how big of a show it is yeah exactly until we met salman khan yeah, actually exactly is a, a hungry band like you said you are always looking for competitions you all have had that ethic and that was one thing i really wanted to ask you because i don't think any other rock band in india has had that ethic to travel around india to get into competitions one after the other to tour whenever you get the opportunity to be that hungry to from the start so uh, when i check wikipedia it tells me that the band started in 2010 but that's never when the band starts the band starts much before when four friends get together and they're like dude this is it like i think our music can connect we connect with each other our music can connect with other people so trace me back to the origins of that like where did underground authority begin underground authority began on 3rd of april 2010 officially <laughs> officially but uh, the band is uh, so... one for wikipedia then <laughs> no no there's a there's a story behind it so adil uh, shorish and myself we were uh, we were a part of an alternative band the thing is the three of us have always been a band yeah so underground authority uh, if you talk about underground authority the base of underground authority has been the three of us since even pre 2010 we always wanted to be a band that is heavy we always wanted to be a band that is melodic and we always wanted to try different genres of music it was not just about oh we're going to just play one thing or uh, just rock throughout or we're going right. we, we were always ready to add in another elements into it so as long as somebody came in and didn't hamper all that we were okay yeah. with that so that much amount of space we were and when ep came in ep was like even when siddhant came in uh you know siddhant was like i want to do he has his own influences and you know he is he composes in his own way and all we saw was whether it's hampering us in any way and because again siddhant is you know at this point of time is musically mature he's been composing he's been a producer for a very long time he addressed the problem himself he was like you know what don't worry i am not going to get into your space you can still you still get to do whatever you want to do Samadhi was saying it's a double-edged mold because it's like uh, you have to fit into the sound, but they also are very excited to see what you are bringing forward. So, what would you like to say about joining Underground Authority as your own unique sound, and then also progressing the sound to what it is now? Be very honest. Uh, see, I don't think uh, if I join us, join join a lineup, or I'm a part of anything. the first idea is never to prove anybody anything especially about the set of skills that i have um because everyone's going to have a different opinion everyone's going to have a different taste and i'm not going to be able to please everybody in the audience it's never going to happen Definitely. so i don't try doing that i don't have to there are people who i work with who like me for what i do uh they see potential in what i do and that's the most comfortable place for me so take us through a process of uh, thankfully everybody who will be listening to this or watching it is a huge music nerd so you can take us through the process of composing something like dur and uh, also your the new song that's coming out the concept behind itself is so wonderful and uh, bhulena is like that's the beauty of the song and the lyrics that you have composed and so take me through the process of writing dur together as a band So Dur was actually not supposed to be an underground authority song. It was actually a song that Adil was writing for his solo EP, and maybe to release it as a single. And right. uh, when I did, yeah. Ha. So Dur, um, I have been toying with the idea of making music, uh, which is only in my head. and uh, and as usual m- my two very important uh, confidants have always been Sh- uh, babla and shorish the drummer 
so i i had been thinking that i want to make a certain kind of sound a certain kind of music and i am not very good at singing i in fact before sid joined the band i had called him one day and like hey bro you have to teach me how to sing and record because i'm planning on writing my own songs and he was like yeah totally man i'll help you uh, that's how that's how you know i had the idea of maybe i want to make some music when we got together as a band we were looking for ideas i had this one verse uh, ready of the other song which which ended up being dur and i sang it out to everybody and uh, siddhant was like oh okay maybe we can do something with this and there was already a little bit of an instrumental idea ready because i had shared it with chorish and babla before and then you know he got in and he introduced a chorus into the song and he you know changed up the lyrics according to what you know he he's a good writer he writes hindi really well um so you know he he sat and wrote it down we made it and and um, so the sound that was in my head for my for the song actually evolved into something that can be put into underground authority taking into uh, taking uh, into consideration sid's uh, ability as a singer and writer uh, so yeah it really worked and i'm very happy that the the initial vision of the song in my head is intact but at the same time there's a lot of everybody else in it insightful it's been great That's all i do is wish you the very best for whatever has to come all the kind of music the kind of journeys and experiences you are going to have as musicians i think it's going to be a wonderful very rewarding journey for us as listeners and for you as musicians and i'm very very excited to hear whatever is about to come out thank you so much nishan for having us and you know letting us talk about our music uh and you know being one of the few people uh you know who are who really want to talk about where we are going rather than where we've been So thank you so much for that. It was great talking to uh, you man.